Welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where I take a deep dive into your favorite fictional stories. And it is finally time to cover one of the most requested characters of all time. Last time on the Mortal Kombat Retrospective series, I covered the Princess of Edenia, the forcibly adopted daughter of Shao Kahn, Kitana. I covered her early development as the prize of winning Mortal Kombat, her tragic backstory of being forced into Shao Kahn's world, her constant struggle to free the realm of Edenia all the way through her dark turn as Empress of the Netherrealm. Today we'll be covering one of the series' original combatants, who almost wasn't close friend of Major Jackson Briggs, future wife of Johnny Cage, and mother of Cassie Cage, the toughest steel military badass Sonya Blade. Sonya Blade has grown over the years to be one of the most recognizable combatants in the series. Fans always expect her to be present from game to game. And ironically enough, she almost wasn't in Mortal Kombat at all. Sonya Blade was not an original part of the roster. The first Mortal Kombat was only going to feature six characters, until a development team was given six more weeks than expected to perfect the game before release. With the extra time, a new character was planned out named Curtis Stryker, a military man trying to bring the Black Dragon Kano to justice. And you might say, hold on, that is Jax on the screen. Jax's original name was Curtis Stryker, and his character was eventually split into three different characters. His appearance became Jax in Mortal Kombat 2. His name became a totally separate character in Mortal Kombat 3, and his backstory was instead applied to the new character in Mortal Kombat 1. The developers believed they needed a female fighter to complement the all-male cast, and they created Sonya Blade. She was named Sonya after one of co-creator Ed Boon's sisters, and was inspired by martial artist and actress Cynthia Rothrock. She was even contacted to play Sonya on screen, but she was doing really well in her career at the time, and was a bit too expensive to hire for the video game. Instead, Daniel Pacina, the actor behind Johnny Cage, recruited an aerobics instructor from his gym called Elizabeth Malecki. She wasn't familiar with video games, she had no martial arts expertise, but she looked the part and she was athletic. To the shoot, she wore army green tights and an outside thong, popular in the late 80s, early 90s, for women to wear while working out. And so, Sonya Blade was born. Ha! I'm Sonya Blade. If you hesitate, I'll take you down. My real name is Liz Malecki. They needed um, a female martial artist on the last minute, and because I had been a dancer, I was able to pick up certain elements very quickly. Sadly, at least in the original Mortal Kombat, Kano and Sonya were considered the least popular characters with players. I mean, it makes sense, especially when they're placed next to cool ninjas, martial arts guys, and a thunder god. As a result, both Kano and Sonya were essentially kicked out of Mortal Kombat 2, reduced to being captured in the background of Shao Kahn's arena, and replaced in the roster with Katana and Melina in order to compete with the popularity of Street Fighter 2's more varied roster. Ultimately, Sony was saved with Mortal Kombat 3, reintroduced and finally gained popularity of the fans, and this time she was played by glamour model and video game actress Carrie Hoskins, who became iconic in the role. Okay, come on. I don't know if I should be telling you this, but I'm going to show you a move, okay? Listen, if you go back, forward, back, and then down, and then push the run button, and if you do that really fast, be your friend forever. Well, I gotta tell you guys, this is my favorite right here. Yeah, it's nice. Get the microphone out of my face. Sorry. Since her original appearance, Sony has appeared in most everything involving Mortal Kombat, with a few exceptions, playing a large role in the live-action web series, the newest live-action movie, and most memorably, the original live-action 90s movies, playing the tough military specialist chasing after Kano. Jax, this is Sonya. Do you copy? While you're at it, why don't you call my agent? Do I look like your secretary? And then she was completely recast in a sequel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, where they may have killed off her love interest Johnny Cage, but they finally teamed her up with Jax after teasing him in the first movie. And their dynamic did work fairly well, all things considered. Extermination Squad? What you mean, Extermination ah! Squad? All you need to know is they're trying to kill me, and probably you too. Me? I don't even know these dudes. Where you been anyway? <laughs> Put me in a spinning ball, take me halfway around the world. If I'm gonna die today, at least tell me why. Nobody told me why Johnny had to die. And who the hell is Johnny? 
And who could forget the Mortal Kombat animated series Defenders of the Realm? You can't talk Sonya Blade without talking the catchphrase that she coined, annoyingly saying it over and over and over. We need a strategic plan of attack. I got one! Combat time! Combat time! Combat time! Bye-bye, ah! baby. Combat time! Sonya, maintain your current position. It's strategically wrong to take combat time. All right, then. Combat time. No. Outside film and animation media, Sonya was also a regular character in the non-canon Mortal Kombat Malibu comics, and she was the subject of really weird storylines, like being captured by Shao Kahn to marry her in order to gain access into Earthrealm, and Kano is the one that gives her away during the ceremony. It's such a bizarre issue. So what is Sonya's backstory? How did a military specialist get involved with a mystical fighting tournament involving all kinds of other worlds? Many gamers will tell you that Sonya chased Kano to Shang Tsung's island in order to avenge the death of her partner, but that was actually never sourced from the original game. Though other forms of media adopted the idea and ran with it, and in Mortal Kombat 11, during a brief interaction between Jax and Kano, there is a very brief mention of a partner. Still got an answer for Sonya's partner. Best let sleeping dogs lie, mate. Not when the dog's rabid like you. But otherwise, the games are mostly silent on that aspect. The Malibu comics introduced a character called Lieutenant Lance that had these stretchy metallic arms and filled in the role of dead partner. The cartoon did its own thing and mentioned her partner called Wexler in that version. He was blown up by Kano while Sonya went to go grab some coffee. Captain, what happened to Wexler? Is he okay? I'm sorry. They just didn't get to him in time. Sonya knew who was responsible, and she vowed Kano would pay. In the more modern Mortal Kombat games with a rebooted timeline, there's been no specific mention that Sonya was after Kano to avenge her fallen partner. And according to Mortal Kombat 9, her and Kano just have a more general hatred and rivalry for each other based on his previous betrayal, which we'll cover in this video. At the end of the day, Sonya absolutely hates Kano, and Kano loves torturing her. Still mad as a cat snake. A lot of my guys got killed because of you. But look how it brought us together. Round one, fight. Sonya's first chronological appearance was set to explain her history with Kano a bit further. And what was that first chronological appearance? Mortal Kombat 1, you say? Nope. Mortal Kombat Special Forces. I remember being so excited about this game when it first started showing up in gaming magazines. I just envisioned something that was part beat em up, part shoot em up, part spy thriller like Siphon Filter, with both Jax and Sonya as playable characters, promising an excellent story, and the final release was nothing like what was advertised. Sonya was completely missing from the game and it ended up being this awful 3D sort of beat em up with terrible controls and one of the most atrocious cameras I've ever had the displeasure of experiencing in a game. Development of the game was a disaster due to deadline issues and to make matters worse, co-creator John Tobias left the company in the middle of development. Uh, then we're also working on a game called uh, Mortal Kombat Special Forces, which stars Sonya. Sonya's first chronological appearance might have been awesome if we got the original idea. It'd be a shame to damage your goods. Go to hell. If hell is as hot as you, I'll go there any day. I think I'm in love. I have to use the toilet. So use the toilet. There's one in your cell. But I can't. My hands are cuffed. I ain't taking off your cuffs. Well, then can you at least come in and pull my pants down for me? Uh... Please? <laughs> and by the way, the original version of the game was also going to be Cabal's first appearance during his Black Dragon days, another character that was wiped away from it. Get them off our tails! You're going soft on us, Cabal, huh? We just massacred a whole squad of Special Forces goons, and you want to just give up and give them back their toy? 
in canon, Sonya Blade's first chronological appearance was in fact 1992's Mortal Kombat. Her biographical information describes her as being from a military family. Her father was Major Herman Blade, mother Erica Blade, and Sonya also had a twin brother named Daniel Blade. As she got older, she joined the US military, rose through the ranks, and was eventually inducted into a task force known as the US Special Forces. A unique task force that had the goal of eliminating some of the world's most dangerous organized crime gangs, including the Black Dragon and Red Dragon clans. Kano of the Black Dragon was one of their highest priorities, and just before the start of Earthrealm's 10th Mortal Kombat tournament, she was hot on his trail, along with her Special Forces allies. Kano and his goons returned fire, but Kano wasn't aiming at Sonya, he was aiming at the explosive barrels behind her. The massive explosion gave Kano a chance to escape, and he jumped into the ship, leaving the harbor. The ship destined to arrive at Shang Tsung's island. Sonya let the ship sail away, and called for a backup ship to follow it. But once she arrived at its destination, Sonya and her team were captured by Shang Tsung's guards. In order to save the lives of her companions, she was forced to participate in the Mortal Kombat tournament as one of Earthrealm's combatants. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat ending, Sonya rose through the ranks of the tournament and defeated Shang Tsung. He had promised that her entire Special Forces team would be released if she won the tournament, but her victory did more than just release her from capture. She also put an end to the Black Dragon Clan and released Shang Tsung's grip on the tournament as its host. In the canon version of events, Sonya fought alongside Earthrealm's combatants, but it was Liu Kang that defeated Shang Tsung. With Shang Tsung's loss, Goro attacked the rest of the fighters, and the island began collapsing into the sea. Johnny Cage attempted to grab Sonya's hand while they fell, but he failed to grab her, and she plummeted down below. Johnny Cage was later found floating at sea by Major Jackson Briggs of the Special Forces. He demanded to know what happened to Sonya. While Cage was being interrogated, the Special Forces received an incoming transmission. Sonya and Kano were both still alive and were forced to work together in order to survive. After the islands collapsed, they somehow washed up together in Outworld. For the time being, they were hiding in a forest outside the Shokan City, and Sonya discovered that Shang Tsung and his minions were planning to attack the surviving combatants back in Earthrealm. After his defeat, Shang Tsung begged Emperor Shao Kahn of Outworld for his life. Earthrealm was lost to Khan due to Shang Tsung's failure, and Shang Tsung devised a new scheme, propose a final tournament, and coax Earthrealm's combatants into Outworld as sort of a home field advantage. Shao Kahn agreed, and as Sonya had discovered, he attacked Johnny Cage and the others in a surprise attack that Raiden stopped. The tournament was won, and Earthrealm was to be kept safe. Shang Tsung proposed the new tournament, and if Earthrealm won this 11th one, Shao Kahn would relinquish his claim of Earthrealm forever. Raiden agreed to the terms, and together they all traveled in Outworld to fight for Earthrealm's final freedom. Sonya Blade didn't participate in this tournament. Eventually, her and Kano were discovered, and they were both kept prisoner in Shao Kahn's arena. But she did witness Liu Kang defeat Shao Kahn in combat. She was rescued from her shackles, and Kano escaped to capture once again. Sonya didn't believe for a second that Shao Kahn would take this defeat likely, so Jax and Sonya both expected that Shao Kahn would attempt to invade, and they issued a warning to the special forces in the US government of the incoming threat. The story was hard to believe, and nothing was done to prepare. Just as they predicted, Shao Kahn did invade Earthrealm directly with his armies in an attempt to take the realm by force. During the events of Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Khan began absorbing the souls of every human and used them to power himself up to incredibly high levels of strength. The only humans unaffected by Khan's attack were the warriors chosen by Raiden to protect Earthrealm, Sonya Blade being one of them. She helped fend off Shao Kahn's armies, and she found Kano near Shao Kahn's fortress. Sonya attacked him, and their battle led to the top of a skyscraper where Kano was defeated and left for dead. Liu Kang again defeated Shao Kahn and sent his weakened and broken body back into Outworld, and the souls of humanity were restored. Once the realization set in that an interdimensional warlord invaded Earthrealm with an army of monsters, Sonya's superiors finally believed her. Preparations had to be put in place to monitor other realms and prepare for any future threats. In response, the special forces were supplemented with a new military body called the Outer World Investigation Agency. This new agency focused less on organized crime and more on cataloging and exploring other realms with advanced portal technology. An invasion like Shao Kahn's would never be allowed again. Although Sonya was now part of the Outer World Investigation Agency, she didn't quit fulfilling her objectives as a special forces member. With Kano gone, the Black Dragon clan had crumbled, and one top Black Dragon was the only one left, Jarek. She followed his trail and tracked him down to Shanghai, where she attempted to capture him. But Jarek was a fierce fighter, there was a reason he was the last remaining Black Dragon out of custody. In their first encounter, he knocked Sonya down and escaped to fight another day. 
After his escape, Jax contacted Sonia. The agency detected strange dimensional fluxes over China, and she was sent to investigate. Since Shao Kahn was out of the way, the Elder God of Death, Shinnok, enacted his plan to dominate the realms. He escaped from the Nether Realm through the realm of Edenia and began an invasion with his demon army. With them, he would take every realm for himself and destroy the Elder Gods that imprisoned him so long ago. Sonya left to take a chopper to the location of the Dimensional Flux, and Johnny Cage was waiting for her. Jax recommended he go with her, and authorized it as long as Johnny Cage didn't touch anything. Together, they arrived in China, and found Liu Kang and his student Kai. The readings the Outworld Investigagency picked up were from Netherrealm demons that were transported to Earthrealm and attacked the Wind God Fujin. Liu Kang and Kai fended them off successfully before Sonya arrived. It was clear that a greater threat than Shao Kahn was brewing. Raiden explained the situation involving Shinnok, and Earthrealm's combatants agreed to travel into Edenia and put a stop to his plans. Sonya used one of the agency's nuclear-powered portal guns to open a gateway into Edenia. And once they arrived, they found the realm being sacked by demons, and Shinnok's servant, the evil sorcerer Quan Chi, welcomed them. The battle was about to begin. Once inside Edenia, Liu Kang sought to challenge Shinnok, and Sonya discovered Jarek. He was attempting to flee from her inside the realm. Reluctantly, he agreed to work alongside Jax and Sonya against Shinnok's forces, since Earthrealm was in danger. Now, Jarek didn't actually care about the realm's well-being, but without Earthrealm, the Black Dragon would have nothing to conquer. In the end, Liu Kang faced off against Shinnok and defeated him. He was sent plummeting back into the Nether Realm, and although Jarek assisted, Sonya still had to bring him in to face punishment for his crimes. It's over, Jarek. Shinnok is dead. The good guys won. You're coming back with me. Never, Sonya. I agreed to help defeat Shinnok, not turn myself into the special forces. The Black Dragon live on. The Black Dragon died with Kano. You're the last one, Jarek. Never! Where's all the guys? Come in, Major Briggs. This is Lieutenant Sonya Blade. What? <laughs> This is Major Briggs. Come in. Sonya, this is Jax. Are you there? <laughs> going somewhere, Jarek? Jax! I thought you were going to. I thought I was what? Dead? Like my heart being just tossed off the cliff? I'm I'm sorry, Jax. Please, don't drop me. Wait, I, I promise. Too late, Jarek. You can't drop me. You have to uphold the law. You have to arrest me! Wait, wait! This is brutality! You can't do it! Wrong, Jarek. This is not a brutality. This is a fatality. Jarek was presumed dead from the fall, but luckily, Sonya Blade caught herself on the way down and survived. After Shinnok's defeat, Sonya continued working with the Outer World Investigation Agency and assisted in recruiting more agents into its ranks. The blind swordsman Kenshi was one of them as well as Cyrax, the ex-cyberized Lin Kuei. Jax and Sonya helped him break free of his programming and restored his humanity. In return, he joined their cause. But while investigating Outworld, both Cyrax and Kenshi went missing, and the Outerworld Investigation Agency had made it their mission to destroy any ancient portals between the realms. Kenshi and Cyrax had no way back without help. During the same time, evil sorcerers Shang Tsung and Quan Chi formed a deadly alliance and destroyed both Liu Kang and Shao Kahn, secretly a clone that the actual Shao Kahn created to thwart any attempts on his life. The deadly alliance discovered and desired to resurrect the immortal army of Onaga the Dragon King, the original ruler of Outworld before Shao Kahn. They used the souls of their vanquished enemies to power Onaga's army to conquer all the realms, but Raiden learned of their plot and recruited Earthrealm's combatants to come back together. They needed to travel into Outworld and stop the pair before it was too late. Sonya Blade heeded the call and used the opportunity to find her missing allies, Kenshi and Cyrax. In her non-canon Deadly Alliance ending, Sonya Blade found Kenshi alive and she was promoted for her actions. After the destruction of the Deadly Alliance, Sonya searched for the missing Special Forces agent Kenshi. She finally discovered him, badly beaten and near death, apparently from hook-like wounds in his ribcage. She managed to return him to the rendezvous point where I transported them back to Earthrealm. Upon her return, Sonya was promoted to General and given a choice of command. She handpicked a team to deal with new terrorist threats located on Earth. While in Outworld, Special Agent Kenshi had learned of a new threat to peace. The Red Dragon had awakened. 
In the canon version of events, she suffered a more tragic fate. She joined in the combined attack against the Deadly Alliance and was killed in battle alongside the rest of her allies. Only Raiden remained to stop Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. In a plot separate from the evil sorcerers, Onaga planned and executed his own resurrection in Return to the Realms of the Living. He appeared to reclaim his army, and the trio was forced to work together to overcome the power of the Dragon King. But Onaga's might, compounded with Shinnok's amulet, was too much. He seemed to be unstoppable. Raiden, Shang Tsung, and Quan Chi were defeated, and Onaga resurrected Raiden's warriors as mindless slaves with his power. Sony Blade was revived and served Onaga's will. The Dragon King began his own conquest of the realms, and his dominion was short-lived. Sonya and her friends were freed from Onaga's control by the combined power of Ermac and the spirit of the deceased Liu Kang. And Shujinko, the warrior that unintentionally helped him return, defeated Onaga. The realms once again had a very temporary peace. Years of Mortal Kombat and inter-realm conflict began destabilizing the fabric of reality, and an incoming Armageddon would destroy all the realms. Delia, the wife of one of Edenia's gods, Argus, created a possible solution. The Elemental Blaze. Blaze contained the power to stop Armageddon, the power to affect all of reality. But to claim his power, Blaze had to be defeated. Their son Taven was awakened during the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon and was prepared to face Blaze, but first he needed to accomplish a quest that would train him for the coming battle. During his travels in Earthrealm, Taven was captured by Sektor, who had created a new clan of cyber warriors known as the Takunin. The Takunin were some of the most wanted fugitives by the Special Forces and the Outer World Investigation Agency, and Sonya ordered an attack on his warship. Grandmaster Sektor! The ship is being attacked! Incoming fighters! Special forces! Takunin warship! This is Sonya Blade! You are in violation of the Earthrealm Accord! Surrender immediately or risk annihilation! Remain at your posts! Initiate code K0NN1H5! Affirmative! Eventually, Taven escaped the destruction of Sektor's warship and continued his journey. Sonya was aware of the stranger that escaped and tracked him while he was searching for the Lin Kuei headquarters. Realm Special Forces. You've got some explaining to do. What are the Takunin up to? Why do you assume I have information? You have some connection with Sektor. He placed a homing device on you that I've been tracking since you teleported away from the Takunin warship. First to the heart of the mountain, then to this frozen wilderness. I can follow you anywhere. Now answer me! What is Sektor planning? I appreciate your assistance with the beast, but I am afraid I cannot help you. I know nothing about Sector. You're hiding something. Comply or I'll be forced to bring you in for further questioning. I'm the son of Argus. You have no authority over me. I have full authority. Taven fought Sonya off, and she was convinced he had no relation to the Takunin. She returned to her base, and the pieces were in motion for the final battle of Armageddon. Shinnok learned to blaze his power and formed an army, consisting of the forces of darkness, and the forces of light met them in battle. The fight for the power of Blaze had begun. Whoever reached Blaze and defeated it would claim ultimate power. In her non-canon Armageddon ending, Sonya Blade used her newfound abilities to finally get rid of her most persistent rival. <laughs> As reward for her victory, Blaze offered Sonya any power she desired. Glowing with energy, she turned and faced Kano, who had just reached the top of the pyramid. 
Her gaze burned into Kano. With a final scream of agony, Sonya's nemesis exploded in a cloud of ash. A mere glance, and her wish had been granted. Kano lived no more. With this new power, she incinerated the remaining members of the Black Dragon and Red Dragon clans, clearing the way for a new era of peace. In the canon version of events, Sonya was killed in battle alongside the rest of the combatants. Shao Kahn claimed the power of Blaze, and only Raiden remained to stand against him. But the battle was lost. All of reality would fall under the will of Shao Kahn. Before his destruction, Raiden used his amulet to send a message to the past to ensure this future would never come to be. His message reached his younger self in an altered timeline during the 10th Earth Realm tournament on Shang Tsung's island. In this altered timeline, Sonya Blade also snuck on Shang Tsung's island in pursuit of Kano, this time without any mention of any special forces team. And her history with Kano was more fleshed out. Kano allied himself with Shang Tsung and Outworld as an opportunity to spread his Black Dragon business, running guns and providing services. Before the tournament, he pretended to be a Black Dragon whistleblower and helped Sonya Blade and the Special Forces. But it turned out Kano was their leader all along, and he led the Special Forces into a deadly trap. The trap resulted in many Special Forces agents being killed, and Kano lost his right eye. From that day forward, Sonya and Jack swore they would bring Kano in. Sonya was destined to participate in the tournament, but her main goal was Kano. <laughs> SF is on the way. You won't get far. Oh, I got a knack for survival. You, on the other hand, are gonna die. Yeah. Step away from the lady. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Who is that guy, anyway? His name's Kano. He was an informant in our Black Dragon investigation. Big time arms dealers. Turns out he was their leader, giving us the runaround. A lot of our guys got killed because of him. So that's not a costume? Your actual military? Special forces. Get out! So you know about this threat to the world stuff, right? Raiden called in the cavalry. Raiden? No idea who you're talking about. <sighs> Damn. He can't be far. He'll have to wait. I appreciate your help, Cage. Johnny. But right now I've got things to take care of. My CO is locked up on this island somewhere. I have to find him. Johnny Cage helped her fight off Kano, and Sonya continued searching through Shang Tsung's island. In this timeline, her special forces team wasn't captured, but Jax did follow her onto the island without her knowledge. He was taken by Shang Tsung and thrown into the dungeons. When she found Jax, she was discovered, and she stressed that she had no part in the tournament. She only wanted to get Jax to safety. Miss Blade, you do not disappoint. I have been expecting you. Let him go! We're not part of your tournament. On the contrary, you are very much a contestant. You will face Sub-Zero of the Lin Kuei Clan of Assassins. Stand in my way and I'll kick your A challenge? <laughs> no. You will not be the one to challenge Shang Tsung. Jax, come on, we're out of here. About time. You aided their escape. You allowed them to escape. They will not get far. Come on, Jax, move it! That's an order! Oh, so you're in charge now? Special Forces Command, this is Sonya Blade. Where's that evac? They are en route. Coming to you shortly. Affirmative. Almost home, soldier. By order of Shang Tsung, no one leaves this island. I don't have time for this. Out of my way! Wins. 
sure don't need any more surprises like them. How are you holding up? I'm fine. Liar. After I get you to base, I'm coming back. Kano's still here somewhere. Your obsession with him is gonna get you killed. I trusted him. Yeah, we all did. But I was the one he used. I think our ride's here. A challenger, Kano. Ugh. Pretty boy ain't gonna save you this time. Sony wins. You're coming with me. Kano is not your prisoner. At least help Jax. He needs a medic. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> hey, looks like you found him. What's up, Sarge? He's a... Hey, what are you doing? It's okay. He's cool. Jax! Seriously, he's cool. <sighs> That's amazing. Told you. Turns out he's a god. Sonya Blade was in a new Thank world you. of mystical sorcerers, gods, and monsters. Something her training never prepared her for. She realized how important Earthrealm's victory was in the tournament, and just like in the original timeline, she witnessed Liu Kang's triumph over Shang Tsung, and joined in the celebration of his victory in Mortal Kombat. Shang Tsung again begged for his life and enacted Shao Kahn's plan for another final tournament. This time Baraka and his Tarkatans were ordered to attack the Wuxi Academy in order to draw the combatants into Outworld. Sonya Blade was captured and brought to Outworld so Raiden and his combatants had no choice but to agree to another tournament. When they arrived, Johnny Cage and Jax traveled with Raiden to find and rescue Sonya. What is it with your Shokan and underground cesspools? If you had not dishonored yourself by attempting escape, we would not be here in the sewer. Sonya! Guards, stop them! So much for the surprise attack. <laughs> she is the Emperor's property, human. She's nobody's property. <laughs> I guess extra arms don't make a difference. You sure have a way with women. You know me. I'm a class act. Thanks. What took you so long? Who's busy hitting me in the face? That's weird. I've got two sets of readings, heavy tech signals, both of them. Technology. Then they cannot be of Outworld. After her rescue, Sonya and Jax followed a signal indicating another Earthrealmer was present in Outworld. When they found the source of the signal, they found Sub-Zero and faced the terrible might of Ermac. That's where... You have disturbed our regeneration process. Ermac. Gotcha! Bleeding. Yeah, but he needs a medic as soon as possible. I must go to the Colosseum. But I need your help to There's get him There's a portal to the south. You can use it to transport yourselves back to Earthrealm. Mother f... That portal better be close! 
Jax almost didn't survive the trip back to Earthrealm. Sonia was able to successfully get him treatment, and his arms were replaced with cybernetic augmentations. While she was saving Jax, Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn in a fit of rage after Kung Lao's death, and just as in the original timeline, Shao Kahn decided to invade Earthrealm with his armies at the insistence of Quan Chi. Sonya and Jax both helped fight back, but in this timeline, Shao Kahn used Shang Tsung's power on the resurrected Sindel, Kitana's mother, and unleashed her on Raiden's warriors. Jax was killed in combat, but Sonya did survive. In her Mortal Kombat 9 ending, Sonya confronted Shao Kahn and defeated him, then swore to destroy his remaining forces. The loss of friends and allies during the battle with Shao Kahn took its toll on Sonya Blade's sanity. She left the special forces and went into seclusion to cope with her grief. But her solitude was brief as she found herself regularly visited by an apparition who claimed to be her missing father. With her father as a guide, Sonya embarked on a mission to exterminate what remained of Shao Kahn's army. In the canon version of events, Sonya and Johnny Cage survived the battle with Sindel and witnessed Raiden unintentionally kill Liu Kang. Raiden confronted Shao Kahn and allowed him to start merging the realms, an act that broke the rules of Mortal Kombat, and the Elder Gods took Shao Kahn away to face his punishment. Sonya, Johnny, and Raiden stood victorious at the cost of their friends' lives. They left to begin repairing the damage done to Earthrealm, and Quan Chi prepared to release Shinnok from his Netherrealm prison, as in the events of Mortal Kombat 4 and Gold. During the events of Mortal Kombat X, Shinnok began his demon invasion of the realms, and the special forces fought back. Johnny Cage and Sonya now work side by side and face the threat directly. Their deceased friends were resurrected by Quan Chi and enslaved as mindless revenants, loyal to Shinnok and the Netherrealm. Scorpion and the Revenant Sub-Zero attacked them while the trio of Kenshi, Sonya, and Johnny followed the revenants to Shinnok's location. And Sonya was crushed, seeing her old friend Jax as a revenant. Smoke is dead. I am an Enra. <laughs> This is your last mission, son. The real Jax wouldn't punch his best friend. <laughs> We're gonna fix you someday. Well, nice seeing them again. Sonya, that's not him. Her mission was to one day restore him to his previous self. In the meantime, Shinnok had to be dealt with before all of Earth were almost destroyed. Johnny Cage, Kenshi, and Sonya were the only hope that remained. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Didn't see you there. Miserable wretch! Insignificant speck of feculent scum! How dare you! She will be the first to join me. No! Johnny, <laughs> did we? Yeah, we got him. <sighs> Remain here. The chamber's properties will heal Sonya Blade in short order. The war is not over. Quan Chi has escaped. Why are you smiling? 
She called me Johnny. Thanks to the actions of Johnny Cage, Shinnok was imprisoned inside his amulet. He rushed to help the injured Sonia, and in this time period, Cage was a much more matured man from his days as a young, cocky actor. Sonia noticed for the first time Johnny Cage acted selflessly and put himself in danger for her. Now that the war with Shinnok was over, Johnny took his opportunity and asked Sonia for a dinner and a movie, for a night that would have a lasting legacy on the history of Mortal Kombat. Shinnok was trapped in his amulet, but the artifact was too dangerous to be left in the open. Raiden consulted with the Elder Gods, and the amulet was placed inside a dark dimension outside of the realms. The only way to release it from its prison was to use the Kamidogu as keys. Kamidogu in this timeline were a set of mystical daggers that tasted the blood of the One Being. Raiden volunteered to be the source of the ritual that contained Shinnok's amulet. Once the daggers were bathed in the blood of a god, it was done. The ritual worked and Shinnok's amulet had vanished. Over time, Johnny Cage and Sonya grew closer and continued working together, and Quan Chi was still out there, who was Special Forces Most Wanted number one. They went on a mission into the Nether Realm after they found Quan Chi's whereabouts, but it wouldn't be so easy to bring him in. Quan Chi had his revenants protecting him, and Johnny Cage was horribly injured. The process of Johnny Cage being converted into a revenant started. Sony had to stop the process and finish Quan Chi, or Johnny would be lost forever. You won't be dead for long. I'll get you out of here. You'll be fine. Don't know. Blood's supposed to be on the inside. Raiden. I must reverse his spell. Mata, Omeleko, Esotika, Arventika. You can't save him. You're weak, Thunder God. Johnny Cage is mine. No, he's mine. Save him. I've got this son of a bitch. Quanchi suffered a devastating nut crunch, and he was forced to escape in a weakened state. His hold over these revenants was lost when Raiden used his own magic to restore their souls. As promised, Jax was freed, along with Sub-Zero and Scorpion. They returned to Earthrealm partially successful, and life continued. Sonya and Johnny never became a couple due to Sonya not desiring a relationship, but four months later, she had to reach out to Johnny Cage to share important news. He was excited to see her, answering the door in nothing but a bath towel, and he continued speaking to her. Yet she was oddly silent, and then she broke the news. Sonia Blade was pregnant with his child. Over the years, Johnny and Sonia had their baby, a daughter named Cassie Cage, and they decided to take a shot at married life. Johnny became a responsible father and lived for his daughter, but Sonia struggled with her responsibilities. She loved her family, but she was also extremely loyal to the Special Forces still, regularly going out on missions late at night when others can handle it. Johnny often tried convincing her to stay home with her family, on one occasion, she missed Cassie's birthday because Kenshi was in trouble. She sent Kenshi into the Red Dragon Clan undercover, and he was found out. He needed an exit strategy, and Sonya felt obligated to help him. This mission in particular is one that would haunt Sonya for years. She led the extraction team against the Red Dragon Clan and helped Kenshi escape with his life. But during the final escape, the extraction chopper was about to be shot down by a woman with an RPG. Sonya prepared to take her out, but when she looked down her scope, she realized the woman had her young daughter right next to her. She had no choice but to take the shot and kill her mother in front of her. The experience stayed with Sonia, and she often spent nights remembering it. More years passed, and Cassie grew into a young adult. And Johnny and Sonia's marriage ended in divorce. Johnny believed that she continuously put her job first before family, and Sonia believed that she simply had no choice. She had to keep the world safe for her daughter. As a young adult, Cassie began training with the Special Forces under the tutelage of her parents, alongside the daughter of Jax, Jackie Briggs. By this time, Sonia Blade was a colonel in the Special Forces and was informed that Cassie had snuck off the base again. But Sonia had no concern. 
Cassie was rebellious like her father, and she likely left to go be with him. There were more urgent matters to attend to. Kotal Khan, the current emperor of Outworld, was found within Earthrealm and captured with Devora and Aaron Black. Outworld was facing a civil war after Kotal took control of the throne. Melina was fighting against his rule and believed that she was the rightful heir, and she enlisted the aid of the Red Dragon clan. Kotal stepped into Earthrealm in order to eradicate the Red Dragon. He stressed that Melina's ambitions would eventually extend into Earthrealm, but Sonya took that as a threat. She was tough, she was militant, and would do anything to protect her realm. Devora attacked her for disrespecting the Emperor, but Sonya was ready for combat if necessary. Kotal was enraged. He wasn't there to start conflict, and he begged Sonya to forge an alliance against Melina to protect both of their realms. Suddenly, Raiden appeared and commanded everyone to cease hostilities immediately. Kotal Khan and his allies opened a portal and traveled back to Outworld. Before he left, he reminded Raiden that he promised inter-realm cooperation after the war with Shinnok. After Kotal's visit, Sonya learned that both Cassie and Jackie were missing. The Black Dragon Clan were hired to kidnap the girls. Jarek and Tazia of the Black Dragons chased them until they escaped into a portal into Outworld. Sonya learned that the Black Dragon Clan was involved and immediately suspected Kotal Khan. He was known to use the Black Dragons in his fight against Melina, and she decided to take a task force into Outworld and force Kotal to answer for his crimes. Once they arrived, they found a tired Kotal Khan recovering from a fresh battle against Goro and a Shokan army. Sonya blasted a shot out of her gun directly into Kotal's side and demanded to know where her daughter was. Reptile stood in front of his master and accused Sonya Blade of making false accusations. And Johnny Cage stepped in to calm the situation down and allow cooler heads to discuss it. Sonya was escalating the conflict too fast without stopping to find the facts. Kotal knew that Johnny Cage was the man that sealed Shinnok in his amulet and respected him as Raiden's champion. He agreed only to speak to him. Kotal admitted that the Black Dragon Clan sells technology to his army, but he was adamant that he had nothing to do with the capture of the girls. Surveillance footage showed that Aaron Black was involved, however, Kotal's spokesperson and negotiator when it came to the Black Dragon. From afar, Movado and his Red Dragons were watching down below, and devised a plan to kidnap the girls for a new plot they were hired for. When Sonya found Aaron Black's last location, she found him tied to a tree and wounded. He had indeed hired the Black Dragon to kidnap the girls, but Movado and his Red Dragons attacked them. During the battle, Cassie killed Movado, and both girls were taken to a place Sonya Blade knew all too well. Aaron Black had them kidnapped as a bargaining chip for Kotal without his authorization, and the Red Dragon left him with a message, inviting Sonya and her allies to Shang Tsung's island. An ancient cleric from the Chaos Realm was posing as a spiritual advisor for the outlawed warlord Rico. In reality, Havoc was devising a plan of his own to retrieve the Kamidogu daggers and steal Shinnok's amulet for himself. Kotal was furious with Aaron Black for kidnapping the girls and wished to make amends with Earthrealm. He agreed to help them find the girls, but an attack was underway. The Shokan army, led by Goro's father, allied with monstrous Oni, were on their doorstep and the special forces agreed to help defend Kotal and the city against the attack before finding Jackie and Cassie. Sonya led the special forces and devised a strategy to counter the attack, placing snipers on the wall, and Johnny fought with them. The attack came, and it was more brutal than expected. The Oni attacked Sonya with massive weapons, but special forces technology was just as deadly, and she was incredibly skilled. The battle raged on. Many special forces' lives were lost, but Kotal Khan was victorious when he defeated Goro's father. The Shokan retreated, and Sonya attended to Johnny's wounds. With the battle over, it was time to go find their daughter. Kotal traveled with them on a ship to Shang Tsung's island through the treacherous waters of the Lost Sea. They didn't have to look far once they arrived on Shang Tsung's island, however. Rico and his minions were waiting for them just on the shoreline. Cassie and Jackie were right there, but something was wrong with them. They weren't themselves. This was a result of Havoc's plot. He corrupted the Kamidogu daggers with blood magic, and anyone cut with the daggers would be under his possession. With increased strength and a violent urge, Sonya begged her daughter to come home, and instead, Cassie attacked. Sonya quickly dodged her and knocked her unconscious, but Cassie instantly recovered. The additional strength of the blood magic made her almost invulnerable. Raiden also fell under the influence of the daggers and stunned everyone on the island, including Melina and her forces. Havoc's plan was coming to fruition. He needed the blood of champions. Havoc also convinced Rico that he needed the power of the Kamidogu and the blood of champions to ascend into godhood. Rico would transform into a blood god, but it was all a deception by Havoc. The ritual caused Rico intense pain when the daggers cut into his body. The entire plot was simply designed to unlock the prison containing Shinnok's amulet. It reappeared inside Rico's body and tore his insides apart, and Havoc collected it from inside his head. Rico was no more. 
Havoc had Shinnok's amulet, and the warriors like Sonya Blade were under his control via the power of the daggers. Kenshi's son and Hanzo Sashi's student, Takeda, appeared to confront Havoc, and Sonya blasted him with her wrist gauntlets, but the mask he wore took the blow. Shiva, Kentaro, and their warriors on the island attempted to fight against Havoc's minions, and Kentaro's head was removed by Sonya. While Havoc was distracted by Takeda's assault, Hanzo Sashi caught him by surprise and removed Havoc's head. With Havoc's destruction, the blood magic wore off, and Sonya and the others returned to normal. She realized she was holding Kentaro's head and immediately dropped it. Sonya apologized to Shiva for taking the life of her ally, but Shiva understood Sonya's actions weren't her own. After such a harrowing experience, Sonya hugged her daughter for the first time in a long time. Shinnok's amulet was a huge threat, and it was back in the realms. It had to be hidden again. Sonya and Kotal agreed to form a non-aggression pact that would require Outworld and Earthrealm to discuss matters before turning to more violent means. As an act of good faith, Kotal turned over weapons of mass destruction that Kano provided him, and they determined that Sonya and the Special Forces were the best people to contain Shinnok's amulet. Sonya promised to put it somewhere it could never be found. The non-aggression pact with Outworld was named the Rico Accords, and Sonya set out to brief the Special Forces on what it entailed, but not before mother and daughter spent quality time together, ending the events of the Mortal Kombat X prequel comic series. Cassie continued training with the Special Forces and eventually gained her own task force, consisting of younger members from various groups. Sonya Blade became General of the Special Forces, and the civil war between Kotal and Melina and Outworld continued. Outworld refugees sought asylum within Earthrealm, and one of the refugees, a young woman named Lee May, revealed that Melina had somehow attained what sounded like Shinnok's amulet, and described a familiar foe to Sonya. This is Lee May. She seeks asylum for her people in Earthrealm. Our village, Sando, was the epicenter of a fierce battle. We barely escaped with our lives. Such is war. I mean, no offense, but you outworlders kind of live for that, right? This was different. The rebels, Melina, had a weapon unlike anything. Entire battalions erased. It was not honorable, not combat. Tell me more about the weapon. A talisman, gold, with a center jewel. Melina wields its crimson energy without precision. Well, that's good then. Not now, Sergeant Cage. It is enough that she possesses it. It turns the tide in her favor. The Emperor grows desperate, and those caught in the middle pay the price. If this talisman is what I suspect it to be, we may all pay a price. We talking about Shinnok's amulet? Can't be. The base, the vault, your wardings. SF, Shaolin, no way anyone can get past all that. I must be certain. Well, this is cozy. You remind me of an Earthrealmer who crossed over with us. He also found humor in everything. Handsome guy, right? He was an Earthrealmer. One of his eyes glowed red. What does she mean? Kenshi, continue with Lee Mei. I'm going to the refugee camp. <laughs> Gotta get to him before he finds a way out. I'll come with. Go get an update on camp security from Colonel Flagg. Why? Because then you won't be here. Are we with you? No. I need to confirm with Kotal Khan that Lee Mei's story is true. You and your team are going to Outworld. Sonya ordered Cassie and her team to go into Outworld and find out if the claims of Shinnok's amulet were true. Back in Earthrealm, Sonya searched the Outworld refugee camp in detail. She knew the man that Lee May described must have been Kano, and he was hiding somewhere among them. One of the refugees' bodies was discovered with wound marks from one of Kano's neckties, clear evidence that he was there, and Raiden contacted Sonya to inform her that Shinnok's amulet was indeed missing. Kano somehow stole it and replaced it with an almost exact duplicate. She had to find him immediately before someone else got hurt. What's your update from Colonel Flagg? He said, why are you bothering me? And I said, because my ex-wife is a pain in it. Where are you going? You can't just walk away. I'm in this too. Not my decision. Thank your buddy, Secretary Blake. This 
is what split us up in the first place. You disappear in your work. Never time for me and Cassie. I had responsibilities. Sorry you couldn't be the center of attention. There was a time when you cared more about your family than your job. General. All right. You seem to know this Kano intimately. Not the word I'd use, but yes. I chased him for years until he escaped to Outworld after Shinnok's invasion. Why would he return now? All that matters is he's... Caught. Gotcha. Are you lost? Hello, love. Been a while. Not long enough. This is General Blade. I need MPs to my location immediately. Oh, let's keep this between friends. A trade. Info for freedom. I don't negotiate with scumbags. Well then, if mother won't play nice, maybe daughter will. If you ever. Back off, and all's well. Piss me off, and Cassie's gonna meet Uncle Kano. I swear to God, I'll kill you. All right. Sonia, ease up. You kill me. Never fight. Amulet. Move, move, move. Sonia, we need that info. Sonia, don't make this another thing you'll regret. Kano was taken in by the special forces and was interrogated. Sonia received confirmation that Kano did in fact steal Shinnok's amulet, and Melina had it in her custody. Quan Chi had reappeared in the Nether Realm after hiding for so long. This was their chance to finally bring him into custody. With Shinnok's amulet out there, it was too dangerous to leave Quan Chi free. Sonia needed someone with Quan Chi expertise to lead a team into the Nether Realm and bring him in alive. She wanted to visit her old friend Jax, no longer a revenant and very much retired from the Special Forces. Jax was attempting to live a life of peace with his wife Vera and was very much against Jackie joining the Special Forces. Together, Sonia and Johnny convinced him to assist as an advisor, but Jax did more than that. The Special Forces team fought off Quan Chi's revenants and Jax brought him in personally. Jax, there is no need. Just stop it. But even under Sonya Blade's leadership, Quan Chi's safety, as an Earthrealm prisoner, wasn't guaranteed. Devora was secretly working for Shinnok and took his amulet. And Hanzo Asashi learned that Quan Chi was behind his family and clan's deaths. Once he found out the Special Forces had Quan Chi in custody, no force in the universe could stop him from exacting his revenge. Sergeant, your team doesn't have two hours. We need her found immediately. Sonya! Cassie. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but there isn't time. Bring your team back here. We need to regroup and redeploy. Yes, ma'am. They're doing their best. I know. General, we have a visitor. You two are friends, right? He tell you he was coming? Nothing. General. Master Hasashi. I hadn't received word you were coming. I will have Quan Chi. We have things under control. You can- He must die. Raiden needs him. Without Quan Chi, we can't restore Liu Kang and the other revenants. You'd leave them trapped? Like you were? Only Quan Chi concerns me. Don't do this, Hanzo. I'll put you down. Then we are at an impasse. Semeru! <laughs> Quan Chi is mine. <laughs> 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 
I wish you no harm, General Blade. Sonya attempted to stop Hanzo and failed, as well as many other Special Forces members. In the end, Hanzo achieved his goal and confronted Quan Chi. In an act of revenge, he removed the sorcerer's head just as Devorah threw Shinnok's amulet at him. Just before his death, Quan Chi uttered the incantations necessary to release Shinnok successfully. The Elder God of Death returned. He planned to corrupt Earthrealm's life force, the Jin Sei, before invading the rest of the realms in his quest for dominance. After he left, Cassie Cage found her mother struggling to recover from Shinnok's attack Mom. and went after Shinnok with her team. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat X ending, Sonya Blade falls asleep and has a horrific prophetic nightmare. Exhausted by her ordeals, Sonya slipped into a deep sleep and began to dream. Kano held Jax and Cassie hostage. He made Sonya choose who would live and who would die. Seeing no way to free them both, she chose Cassie and screamed as Kano killed Jax before her eyes. Still screaming, she was awoken by Johnny. He had horrific news. Jax was dead by an assassin's bullet. In the canon version of events, no such thing happened. Jax was still very much alive and well. Cassie, like her father before her, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shinnok and successfully defeated him. And Sonya arrived just in time to help Cassie free the captured Johnny Cage. This way. In here. Isolate Shinnok and Devorah. And get the medic. We'll fix you up. Help is on the way. You should have seen Cass. Wipe the floor with Shinnok. I believe it. And you. You did a great job with your team, Johnny. You hear that, Cass? She called me Johnny. I thought she might. This time, Shinnok wasn't sealed in any amulet. Raiden would become a ruthless defender of Earthrealm, and he punished Shinnok in one of the most painful ways imaginable. An Elder God couldn't be killed, so Raiden removed his still-living head. He used it as a warning to Liu Kang and Katana, who were now the leaders of the Netherrealm, and they placed Shinnok's head inside a cathedral as an item of worship, ending the events of Mortal Kombat X. During the events of Mortal Kombat 11, Sonya Blade watched Cassie rise through the ranks of the Special Forces, just as she did, and promoted her to Commander. She also rekindled her relationship with Johnny Cage again. It seemed the battle with Shinnok had in fact brought the family together. As you were. For 25 years, the Special Forces have been Earthrealm's sword and shield. We've pushed back Shao Kahn, defeated Shinnok, Yet none of our victories have come without cost. Recently, Commander Jackson Briggs was honorably discharged. His wounds, both physical and psychological, left him no longer fit to serve. We honor Jackie's father, and we honor his sacrifice by doing what he would do, tirelessly defend Earthrealm. Sergeant Cage, step forward. Your leadership and warfighting ability have earned you promotion to Commander. Congratulations, Commander. Come on, Dad. You really have to go? Well, you've got your duty, Commander, and I got mine. Starring in yet another Ninja Mime sequel isn't what I'd call duty. I need to provide for you in the manner to which you become accustomed. Jeez, guys, I'm right here. At that moment, Raiden appeared, gravely concerned that the Netherrealm was an immediate threat. He recommended that the Special Forces Strike Team hit Liu Kang and his revenants before they got the chance to attack Earthrealm. The seat of their power was the Cathedral of Shinnok. If it were destroyed, their undead army would fall with it. Sonya agreed with the attack and planned to destroy the Cathedral from the inside. Johnny Cage had a bad feeling about the entire operation, but Sonya wasn't changing her mind. That'll buy us enough time to infiltrate the Cathedral, destroy it from the inside. 
We get pinned down in there, there's no way out. To ensure Earthrealm's survival, we must all be willing to sacrifice. Uh, you know, it's been two years too much of your grim and gritty makeover droning on about sacrifice. You don't have a family to lose. I know loss, Johnny Cage. Raiden's right, Johnny. We're not ready for another war. We've got to take out Netherrealm's army now, before Liu Kang can bring it here. Cassie, Sony, and the Special Forces went with Raiden into the Netherrealm, and Raiden used the power of Shinnok's amulet to create distraction. While Cassie was dealing with the threat of Liu Kang's revenants, Sony headed downstairs to set C4 on the structural columns, enough to bring down the entire place. The revenant Liu Kang followed them and attacked, leaving an injured Sonya behind. gonna make it. What? I'm not leaving you behind! Get your team home. That's an order. Your duty. Mine's to finish the mission. Mom, no! We can save you! I love you, Cass. Give your dad a kiss for me. Mom, no, don't! Mom? Mom! She started the detonation sequence. Override it, Jackie! There is no override. Commander! Our orders are to leave. so fortunate. You did not just say that. Thank God you're back. How did the mission go? Sonya Blade was dead. Her sacrifice allowed for the destruction of the cathedral, but this wouldn't quite be the end of Sonya. Shinnok's mother, the Titan Kronika, responsible for the flow of time, reached out to Liu Kang and Katana. She wanted to make Raiden pay for what he did to her son, and she began her plot to create a new timeline free from his influence and the partnership of Liu Kang. But creating the new timeline would take time. She had to work from her fortress and needed protection. Time itself would be breaking, merging past and present. Combatants that were long gone reappeared from the past, and some met their future selves. Timelines were merging into one. Raiden himself vanished and was replaced with a Raiden from the era of the Outworld Tournament. And a much younger Sonya Blade reappeared with a younger Jax from that same era. Both of them were shocked to see their futures in front of them, and Cassie struggled to interact with the mother. She just lost that morning. Thanks. Weird, isn't it? Not being in charge. That's what's weird? That and having daughters our age. Look at her. How do I have a kid with him? <laughs> at least she's not an actress. Commander? Yes, Mom. I mean, General. I mean... 
This is strange for me, too. You have no idea. What? Uh, how do I say this? This morning, we were on a mission. And, and you gave your life to save it. Son of a bitch. Seriously? Yeah. And now here you are. Young enough to be my sister. Here's how you access incoming reports. Swipe here to cross-check them with past reports. The software can suss out the deltas. Now that's progress. That woman over there, she's the real deal. Oh, I got eyes, brother. As younger you, I saw him. You swear to tap that at the earliest opportunity. <gasps> what? It's our destiny. hell do I ever sleep with that guy? Who's your father? I can't believe I just said that. Look, my dad isn't the Johnny you know. He grew up. I like to think you rubbed off on him. As a kid, I looked up to both of you. My dad, your grandfather, was my hero. Called me Private Pumpkin. Huh, that's what you called me. We should get back to work. You left me behind? Excuse me? My final mission. No, I'm not doing this. Not now. Not with you. Damn it, Cassie. You abandoned me? I just saved the company. That was my order. Who the hell gave you that order? You did. Read the full report, Lieutenant. The alarm sounded in the Special Forces headquarters. They were under attack. The Cyber Lin Kuei were resurrected with Kronika's time merger, and she ordered Sector and Kano's Black Dragon to lead an attack on any that posed a threat to her plans. Sonya was captured by the Cyber Lin Kuei during the attack, and the elder Johnny Cage answered the call to rescue Sonya. Johnny Cage, Cyrax defeated you when you were younger and stronger. As I am his superior, I am yours. You're forgetting the time I beat Shinnok mano a mano. Oh wait, you were dead when that happened. Who's next? Oh. I'm next, Hollywood. Tells a full-on generation swap here. Cabal, go get my lesser half. And the base? Taken care of. The survivors of the attack retreated to Hanzo Asashi's Shirai Ryu Fire Garden. We welcome. Meanwhile, the younger Sonya and Johnny Cage were taken by Kano and thrown into one of the Black Dragon's fight clubs. And the younger and older Kanos used deception and treachery to entertain themselves with their captives. Kano fully planned to kill Sonya, but first wanted to enjoy the spectacle of her fight. So Sonya's the skank who burns me? Ah, uh, she more than burns you, Cabal. She goes black ops on your ass. Shocks, knives, the bloody works. Patched you back together myself. Well, most of you. She's dead. Miss Law and Order really does that to him. 
Nah, but now he's motivated. Hope you're ready for some preemptive vengeance. What the hell are you talking about, Cabal? You, torturing me to get dirt on the Black Dragon. Don't believe every rumor you hear. Shit. Kill us whether we fight or not. Fighting buys us time. The final way out. So, quit being a diva. Hit me! Just as the fight ended, Cassie and the Special Forces arrived to save her younger parents. The younger Aaron Black was sent in by Kano to end Sonya Blade before she could be rescued, and she promptly defeated him in combat. Cassie rescued her parents, and escaping would be no easy task. This would be the final confrontation between Sonya and the Kanos. about this future, love? I'm alive, but you're dead as a doornail. Worst thing is, it's those Netherrealm stiffs did you in. Should have been me. Let's have ourselves a do-over. in this future, but that can change. Now this is a pickle. Mother... Can you break his neck faster than I can gut, pretty boy? Don't forget, it's two for one. He dies, so does your little girl. Thanks, Kano. For what? For reminding me of the rules. the Black Dragon were defeated, and Kronika sent her Enforcer Garrus to accomplish what most couldn't. Garrus was almost completely unstoppable, an immortal creature that continuously became stronger after every defeat. He could be temporarily disabled, but he would always return, and Sonya was able to hold the mech successfully, accepting the future that's been revealed to her. Sonya Blade, mother of Cassie Cage, 
Yeah. What of it? Cassie Cage defeated Shinnok, son of Kronika. I am his mother's vengeance. Try coming back from this. You okay? I'll be fine. I come from tough stock. Listen, what I said back at the base about the mission, it wasn't fair. You're a damn fine soldier. I'm so proud I can almost picture myself dating Johnny. Almost. I wish I could go back to our last mission over. It wasn't easy finding out how I die or could die. But I reread the file. You followed orders, saved your squad. I'm just glad that my sacrifice saved Earthrealm. And you. Besides, you heard Raiden. Things will never go back to what they were. We all have to choose our destiny. Kang and Kung Lao were kidding about this guy. All squads withdraw! Evac! Now! Back in the Fire Gardens, Raiden was slowly being influenced by the power of Shinnok's amulet, and he came into a confrontation with Liu Kang from the past. History was repeating itself, and then Raiden had a realization. Kronika had manipulated timeline after timeline prior to this one to ensure that Raiden and Liu Kang would never stay allied. One of the timelines Raiden suddenly recalled was a bizarre one where the universe of Mortal Kombat came into contact with a universe outside the realms, filled with villains and heroes, the DC Universe. In this universe, during the events of Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, Shao Kahn and Darkseid merged into one being. In her ending, Sonya defeated this Dark Khan and received a new cosmic power. Sonya wins. During the World Merge Crisis, a member of the Green Lantern Corps was killed. At the moment of his death, his power ring traveled to Sonya, taking her as its new master. When the worlds were once again separated, the ring stayed with her. Now she has the ultimate weapon, but only one charge. She must use the ring sparingly until she can find a way to replenish its power. Back in the current timeline, Raiden stopped his attack. Kronika's manipulations of history had to stop. He had to work alongside Liu Kang. Plans were made for the final assault on Kronika's fortress. Liu Kang became a god with assistance from Raiden and infiltrated Kronika's keep. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat 11 ending, Sonya claimed Kronika's power over time and used it to form her own god squad to protect the realms. None of us saw Kronika coming, not even Raiden. But with the hourglass, I can see every terror in the realms. Any sane person would run screaming at the sight of them. It's my duty to take out these ancient, all-powerful beings. But to do that, I need an elite squad of immortal gods. Turns out, to make a new god, you've got to destroy an old one. So I hunt the oldest I can find, an omni-deity from a forgotten unpronounceably named realm. It's the fight of my life, but I've got something this god doesn't. Family. In my past, these were the people who mattered most. Now, they're my god squad. My daughter. My brother in arms. My goddaughter. <sighs> yep. Even Johnny but only because Cassie insisted. And maybe I missed him a little. Just don't let him know that.
In the canon version of events, Sonya never claimed the power of Kronika. Liu Kang destroyed her and became responsible for fixing time. However, her crown constructed by Shang Tsung was destroyed, a device that was needed to properly fix time without destroying it in the process. Shang Tsung reappeared from a void with Fujin and Nightwolf to warn Liu Kang. Liu Kang suspected that Shang Tsung had plans of his own, but believed that his claims were in fact true. The crown was needed. And so Liu Kang sent the trio back into the past of that current timeline to retrieve the crown intact. In this altered version of events, Kitana's mother Sindel was resurrected, but this Sindel was pure evil and loyal to Shao Kahn. The pair of Shao Kahn and Sindel were extremely powerful together. They convinced the Shokan armies to fight for them, and the Cage family was taken prisoner. That's the last time Sonya was seen in the current history of Mortal Kombat. In the end, Shang Tsung revealed his deception, and Liu Kang confronted the evil sorcerer with his new god powers. After the battle, a unique new era was created with unexplored possibilities. What will this new history hold for Sonya Blade and her family? Will she find a way to balance her family with her service, or will she be forever cursed to defend Earth realm from power-hungry tyrants?